Hi, this is Ian Kilborn at St. Lawrence College, Kingston, Ontario, Energy Systems Engineering Technology. This is a video on the introduction to HOT 2000 software for modeling residential buildings. I've opened uh, HOT 2000 and I'm going to start over here on the File button and New. Um, the main choice to make here is House or House Wizard. Um, you can go either way. Um, as you get more experienced, you may prefer House. Um, if you want to get in there fast and uh, try some stuff, um, House Wizard will build a, a house for you that allows you to run some reports and stuff. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, with House today. The uh, little introductory screen we get here um, just asks us how many ceilings, walls, foundation, floors, and so on. Um, this is uh, what the software will load in as our uh, beginning house. Not to worry, we can add uh, any of these afterwards if we want to have more of them, and uh, we can take them away as well. So uh, I've said OK to that, and uh, now the software has started to build a house for me. Um, as that previous screen said, I've got one ceiling, one wall, one floor, one foundation, uh, and so on. This is domestic hot water down here, heating and cooling systems, um, all that kind of stuff on a tree view over here. Um, across the top, we have the ability to add more components. So if I want to add another wall, I click on here. Um, these five uh, or four different uh, boxes here are all different types of foundations. So you have a basement, you have a crawl space, you have a slab on grade, and you have a walkout basement. So you can add uh, any of those different types of foundations to your uh, to your building. Um, this is a floor. So a floor would mean a uh, normally a floor other than a foundation. So for instance, if I go in here, so this would be a, a cold floor that uh, was not part of a foundation. So for instance, a house that was up on uh, up on posts or something like that, uh, that had uh, was unenclosed underneath, um, or some other kind of floor that extended outside the foundation. A large bay window would have a floor that you might model here. Uh, the foundation includes the floor uh, in of a normal house. So my job now is to go down and uh, go through these various things and add the pieces that I need. You can see for a wall here, there's a little plus sign. If I click on that, um, you'll see that there's a door and a window. Um, and so it's important to associate the doors and the windows with the particular wall that they are cut out of because the uh, wall area will be reduced um, automatically by the size of the doors and windows that you put into that wall. So let's just uh, start at the top and we'll take a quick look at the ceiling. So ceiling means the thermal boundary of the house at the top. Um, here we have uh, what is the roof structure like and there's a number of choices to pick from. This is a good time to look what happens when I right click one of these bars and uh, I get a very nice help menu over here which describes what uh, actually all these different roof types are and uh, helps you choose uh, the right one for the situation that you've got. So that's the construction, the ceiling type. Now this is where we're going to determine what the uh, insulation level is and what the uh, type of, uh, of framing might be. Um, new code means that you're going to build that from scratch. Um, user specified means that you already know what the R value is of the assembly and you're going to enter that straight up. Uh, and these ones down here are one um, codes for ceilings that have been created in the past uh, which you can just select. So uh, once you start working with buildings and you create some new codes and you hit the same type of ceiling again, then you can just come down here uh, and pick these. Um, I'm not going to go into the code builder right now, but uh, normally on your first time through, you're going to use uh, new code here, um, and you're going to build up 
uh, the assembly that you've got to get the proper R value um, using that link there. And uh, where is this ceiling located? Well, it's in the house, of course. Um, we have the length of one side of it, um, as well as the area, are the inputs here, and the slope of the roof up above goes here. Uh, the heel height, this is the uh, height um, at the uh, at the edge where the uh, where the ceiling and the wall meet and the idea here is if the heel height is too low it's going to pinch off that insulation that you've modeled over here um, and so you're going to have a little bit more heat loss um, around the edges and this is intended to do that for us so that's a ceiling um, a wall now um, walls are a little bit confusing um, it asks for a direction um, in fact if you read the help menus about direction uh, the program is not really calculating the heat loss any differently according to the direction here um, if we have uh, a bunch of walls that uh, all have the same construction and the same R value as we usually do um, you can choose NA here um, and you can enter um, your entire uh, wall that has that same construction um, using the height and the perimeter. So if I had, for instance, the, uh, the first story of a house was a 2x4 um, R12 insulated wall with some sheathing and drywall and such. Um, and uh, I could put um, not applicable for direction, put the height of that wall and the perimeter. Um, height times perimeter will give us the uh, the area of the wall um, and that's the area that uh, HOT2000 is going to use for uh, for heat loss. So uh, in the height you want to make sure that you count the uh, joist, the floor joist area um, either on, you know, on the floor below the wall you're doing um, or uh, associate it with the wall uh, up above, but make sure you count it one way or the other. Uh, you can also uh, count your floor joist space as its own wall type. Uh, that gives you the advantage that you can have a, a different R value for the floor joist area compared to the main wall area, which is usually the case. Once again, uh, when I get into wall type, this is where the program is going to uh, choose uh, an overall R value for that wall. And uh, so, for instance, if I pick a 2x4 R12 wall that I have modeled, it's been modeled before, um, I can just click that in there. And uh, here's the, uh, the R value that comes out here. Um, we're in metric units right now, RSI. Um, that's why it's coming up as low as it is. Um, the lintel type. Um, the uh, the lintels, um, of course, are the beams above the doors and windows, and uh, there can be significant heat loss through those areas because less it's uh, not as good typically as the wall, um, and so this allows you to actually build up a code um, for the lintel area, um, or you can choose one of the defaults, um, and like everywhere, if you want to know what these things mean, you can right-click them um, and come on down here and uh, have a look at the help menus and uh, you'll see uh, a nice help menu here that describes um, what is meant by lintel and uh, how to model them. Corners and intersections are uh, unique to walls. Uh, the idea here is that uh, you typically have more heat loss at the corners and the intersections and uh, so we put in the number of corners uh, that this wall is going to have. Intersections are uh, intersections with, uh, with other walls. Um, corners are, means uh, inside or outside corners um, of that wall. These then are the doors um, and windows that uh, are cut uh, into this particular wall type. And uh, now windows, uh, direction does matter with windows. And uh, so we'll need to uh, build up our windows, um, you know, one or two or three at a time. If there's a number of windows that uh, have the same dimensions and face the same direction and are cut out of the same window, that's great. Uh, cut out of the same wall, that's great. Uh, we can just increase the number here. 
um, and move along. If they're all unique and oddly shaped, uh, then we're going to have a number of windows uh, down here under this wall. And the same, of course, is, uh, is true of doors. Um, once again, with windows, we have uh, a code builder here that will allow us to uh, come up with some codes for the window, depending on what the construction is. And once you've done a few, you'll have uh, some to pick from here that will make things go faster for you the next time. Uh, you're probably going to end up hitting the same window types according to what's popular in your geographic area um, again and again. Uh, foundation, as I said, there's uh, four different foundation types. Uh, this one is a basement, um, so that's great if you've got a basement. Um, you may not have a basement, um, in which case you're going to choose um, a different foundation type. Um, here you've got a couple of tabs, and uh, so we can have uh, insulation, exterior or interior, um, added here. And uh, we can talk about uh, what the core material is um, all the way through here. Many of these things are self-explanatory or right-click on them to get more information. Temperatures, this is where we put the uh, heating and cooling set points. Um, HOT 2000 uh, allows us to have only one heating and cooling set point for the entire building. Um, one of the disadvantages of HOT 2000 compared to more sophisticated programs, um, it is intended to be a residential uh, house modeling program. Uh, base loads are where uh, electrical loads uh, get counted, and uh, as well as uh, hot water loads. Um, often when we're doing building modeling we uh, we want to have zero electrical loads and we're just looking at uh, building envelope heating cooling and uh, and our hot water load um, here's where we talk about uh, how much uh, hot water consumption we expect that we're going to have um, hot 2000 will choose a number here based on the number of occupants uh, that you put over here and uh, and how long they're home Natural air infiltration, this is where we uh, select um, how leaky the house is and uh, hopefully you have uh, blower door data uh, in which case you can uh, enter choose blower door test values and uh, this now changes to ACH at 50, the air change rate at 50 standard uh, blower door uh, software output and uh, we can uh, also show the uh, ELA um, here um, as well. Heating and cooling systems. Um, obviously this is where we're going to model the uh, equipment that's uh, heating and cooling the house. and. Uh, We choose the uh, equipment that we're uh, we're going to have um, over here, and uh, whoops, and then the tabs at the top will change uh, a little bit depending on what we've chosen here. So if I just want to model a furnace, um, come over here, and I give it the energy source that I want, the equipment. Uh, type is an electric furnace in this case, so if I wanted a natural gas furnace, um, I can do this. Again, the uh, the fields will change a little bit, and now I have a number of different choices of natural gas furnace, from condensing to, uh, you know, continuous pilot, natural draft, uh, at the other extreme. And uh, there will be some efficiency numbers that uh, are um, offered here but uh, it's great to enter either the steady state efficiency or the AFUE uh, whatever you know right here and you're going to get better accuracy for that. Um, similarly we do domestic hot water down here uh, following a similar process. Um, once you've got uh, a house modeled um, a good thing to do is to uh, try to run a report. Uh, that's where your information that you're you're wanting to get is going to come from. And uh, so you can try to run a full house report like this 
And the first thing that will probably happen to you is you'll get uh, a bunch of errors. So pre-check errors for house number one. So before the program will actually calculate um, anything for you, um, you're going to have to deal with these errors. And uh, so I've got some walls and things with lengths equal to zero, and I've got um, R values that are unspecified, and um, those are mainly the errors, um, lots of them. And uh, so if we had uh, modeled a real house, um, hopefully we'd have little to uh, to few errors there. And we can tidy those up and carry on. Uh, many different types of uh, reports. Um, a full house report is a good one to start with. Um, once you uh, narrow down to the things that you're interested in, a selective house report is uh, is um, a pretty good way to go. In the selective house report, um, you can check, you can uncheck boxes for things that you don't want to show on the house report. The full house report goes for many pages, and it may include a whole bunch of things that you don't uh, particularly care about. Um, so in selective, you can uh, you can uncheck some of those, and you get a smaller report. Um, you can choose different units for the report than uh, you used for the uh, for the data entry. Um, nice little feature. Um, here's another nice little feature. Here is um, anytime you want to uh, just get a quick reading on where you're at, you can uh, do Alt C or uh, come up to this menu and choose Calculate. Uh, and this will uh, run the basic calculation engine over your data. Uh, it'll eliminate any errors that you have, um, and it will show you uh, the basics of your house. Energy savings calculator is uh, also very useful once you start um, looking at upgrades. I'll do uh, probably another video later on upgrades, but uh, once you've got a house successfully modeled, um, then you click on this, uh, which is shaded out right now. You click right here to add an energy upgrade. Um, at this point, you will see the um, effect of changing something in your house as uh, hopefully fuel savings. Um, getting accurate fuel savings depends on inputting proper fuel costs. So um, here I am. This is the top of my tree in the house window. And you can see there's many tabs coming across here. Um, so I can change some things about my house. Um, if you change these things here, these basic geometry things, um, you should not change um, after you've started modeling and putting in dimensions. Get these right uh, before you start your dimensions. Um, the weather, this is where you uh, tell the program um, where the building is located so that it picks the proper weather uh, data for it. Um, and here is where we uh, do fuel costs. And fuel cost is uh, a little bit clunky to work through. You end up uh, creating a fuel cost library um, and then uh, you end up telling um, HOT2000 right here uh, which library to use and which rates to use uh, for all of these various fuels. So in your fuel library you're going to tell it um, some rate numbers uh, for the different fuels and uh, I will do a different video on the fuel cost library later. Everything else here I think is uh, is pretty self-explanatory. So I'll stop there for uh, our first introduction to HOT2000 and look for some more videos on specialized parts of it later on.